This is the Wheel of Time Spoilers Podcast. Your hosts are Seth Jacobson and Patrick Heiler. Chapter 38, Practice, with the Flame of Tarvalin, as aptly named as always. All right, so we have been with Rand and uh, the Portal Stone for a while. It's nice to switch back to the girls in the White Tower. They've had a little bit of a training montage. Sitting cross-legged on her bed in her white dress, a queen made three tiny balls of light weave patterns above her hands. She was not supposed to do this without at least one accepted to supervise, but Nynaeve, glaring and striding up and down in front of the small fireplace, did, after all, wear the serpent ring, given to the accepted, and her white dress had the colored rings encircling the hem, even if she was not allowed to try to teach anyone yet. And Aguine had found over these last thirteen weeks that she could not resist— she knew how easy it was to touch Sidar now. She could always feel it there, waiting for her, like the smell of perfume or the feel of silk, drawing her, drawing her. And once she did touch it, she could rarely stop from channeling, or at least trying to. She failed almost as often as she succeeded, but that was only another spur to keep on. It often frightened her, how much she wanted to channel frightened her, and how drab and dreary she felt when she was not channeling, compared to when she was. So a couple of things I wanted to point out there. First, 13 weeks is how long she's been training in the White Tower. Right. Which matches up pretty closely with Rand's one season through the Portal Stone. So this is a pretty big time jump right here that he sort of throws away in like three words. Yeah. uh, Where he says, oh, yeah, the last 13 weeks. And then like you never really think about it again. Note that they have been in the White Tower for a while. This is sort of the, the Harry Potter ish version of the wheel of time it's like the two chapters where they're in training as novices yeah and sort of obeying all the rules and doing what they're supposed to do and becoming friends with elaine and min and then i thought there was just great imagery around sidar and how much it's like a drug i really liked that too it's kind of what an addiction feels like. You can live without it, but it sucks. How drab and dreary she felt when she was not using. She wanted to drink it all in, despite the cautions about burning herself out. And that wanting frightened her most of all. I love the analogy between using the power and using drugs and how it heightens your senses and... You know, it's something you want to do and you end up like building up a tolerance and you can do more of it. It's it's almost feels like training and and just like the power connection to it. The training really is like taking low levels of the drug and building up a tolerance to the point where you can take more and more and more of it and while still functioning on it. Control yourself. Exactly. This is your brain on side R. Yeah, and an overdose is, you know, like burning yourself out. I like that. It's a, it's a yeah. really good analogy. It, it works is. really well. And then Queen's sitting there with Min and Nynaeve. Elaine shows up in a second. I noted that she feels lucky to have made two good friends since coming to Tarvalin. And that's, of course, Min and Elaine. Yeah. Nynaeve, obviously, was already her friend. Well, I guess. If you could call it that. On the journey, they sort of make the decision to go to friends. You know, when Nynaeve says, you should probably call me Nynaeve, I'm not the wisdom anymore. Yeah. So they made that transition a little bit. But obviously, they have a long way to go. They've gone from wisdom and young girl to two women out on the road. But eventually, Nynaeve is going to have to be calling her Amarillin. Mother. (laughs) (laughs) I also noticed that despite the next couple of paragraphs being Min and Aguin talking about Galad, he's the only male character mentioned in this entire chapter. And they just talk about how pretty he is for a couple of paragraphs, and that's all. <laughs> it's just it like kind of – what is it called? The Bechdel test. So the whole the whole chapter doesn't exactly pass, but I feel like it pretty much passes. I, yeah, I think the the books on general do a decent job of passing. Especially since Galad's total the whole role is just like, yeah, he's good looking, and then they just move on. Uh-huh. <laughs> it you know, it's not a perfect test, but it's just a broad ruler to figure out like does this 
you know, for me, it's just does this series have interesting female characters? Yeah, that's that's all I'm really looking for. Interesting, powerful female characters. And it does, I guess, is the point that I'm making. Yes. The test is almost like if you're applying it and what you're watching barely passes, it's probably not that good. I don't, I think of the Bechdel test is a, a very low bar. Like, is there a scene where there are only women in it and they're not talking about a man? Yeah. That's a super low bar. Is that I'm summing that up, but that's pretty much what the Bechdel test is, right? Essentially. So two female characters who are named have to have a conversation without talking about a man. The Wheel of Time passes that over and over. Oh, yeah. Many, many times. Uh, I noticed there's a mention of Else here, who... Elsie Grinwell. Elsie Grinwell, who was flirtatious with Rand, while Matt made fun of him a little bit. <laughs> uh, and, and she's there in the tower she's now. She's there in the tower, which is... I, I keep pointing that out because Lanfear impersonates her later. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's here now, and she ends up does end up leaving, but... Uh, She's just flirting with all the boys, basically. Min is telling Egwene that she saw Elsie making moon eyes at Galad, and Galad just walked up to her and was like, have you seen Egwene lately? <laughs> I had this idea earlier when Galad was introduced that I thought Egwene and Galad should get together. And they go with it for a while. There is like, a while here where it seems like it's going to happen. Yeah. and I, I really do think that would be the better pairing. I don't know when she transitions to Gawain. But I wish she'd just stuck with Galad. I couldn't put a finger on it, but yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Gawain. I don't think anyone is. No. Well, especially in the end when he's the, just the most useless character in the last three books. But she's totally like thinking Galad's great. But then you've got both Elaine and Min telling her that he's kind of a dick. And yeah. So I think eventually she's just like, fine. I'll. Nobody supports her dating Galad in so much as any novice is allowed to date anyone. And then the golden-haired daughter heir of Andor pushed the door shut and hung up a cloak on a peg. I just heard, she said, the rumors are true. King Galdrian is dead. That makes it a war of secession. Min snorted, civil war, war of secession. And so this happened, what, quite some time ago. ago. Well, probably a little less than that because Rand was traveling for a couple of weeks after they parted. Weeks? I thought it was like two days. Oh, yeah, you're right. But he spends a week in the city before. He, in Kyrian. In Kyrian. I thought they leave right when they find out the horn went through a way gate. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's been about 12 weeks since the king died. And so it took about three months for the rumors to get from Kyrian to Tarvalin. And for the ladies to find out. Mm -hmm. That's all we hear. Min Sank goes on to say, or in Kyrian, or on Toman Head. They may have caught the false dragon in Saldea, but there's still a war on in, on in Tyr. We know the war in Kyrian is because of Rand. Succession war. The succession war. Toman Head is due to the Shan Chan. Chan. The false dragon was Taim being caught in Saldea. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be broken out shortly. And the war in Tyr? That what I was I wasn't sure about. I wanted to ask about that. Does anyone know what's going on in Tyr right now? Oh, there was a false dragon in Tyr, but he couldn't channel. Oh, okay. He's not. I don't think you hear about him ever again. Yeah, because they said they were like four false dragons, two of which could channel, right, and two of which couldn't, and we didn't really get their names or anything. And Tyr, Tyr, Saldea, yeah, Loghain was in. The West somewhere, Gildan. I mean, he is a Mirandian. He was sort of in that area. I'm not really sure. Tame and Seldea, Loghain and Gildan, unnamed false dragon in Tyr. And Sean Chan on the Toman head. Oh, I was trying to think if there was a fourth dragon. I guess Rand is the fourth dragon. Okay. Oh, Rand is counted as one of the false dragons at this point. Is he? Because I don't think he's said anything. Said anything? No, he's not. He's not. A, he's not a dragon until after Falma. Ah, uh, I mean, he's destroyed all the Trollocs on the borderland, but nobody knows about that. That's not like being proclaimed across the sky. And Min goes on to say, "Yesterday, I heard one of the cooks saying she heard Arthur Hawkwing was marching on Tanchico. 
Arthur Hawkwing. <laughs> Which is actually really close to the truth. His descendants. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when they blow the horn, he'll be there. But I guess that's not Tanjiko. Elaine says she saw Loghain sitting on a bench and weeping. He ran away when he saw me. So he's just sort of seeing the effects of being gentled. I kind of liked hearing that, having that reminder, because Loghain is a real badass in the later series. But at this point, he's like, he's just a broken man isn't min continually seeing like that halo of glory around him or has that started yet because she doesn't mention it here yeah she tells suan right after she sees it so it's not there yet after she comes back from to head yeah so she's still he doesn't have that halo around him yet he's still just a broken man the next thing i have is a queen noting that she hadn't had any dreams about rand and since Right after she got to the tower. No prophetic dreams. And why do you think that is? Because Rand is not in this reality for a season or so. So that sort of correlates the two events that her dreams stop when he goes into the portal stone and he's sort of not in this reality. He's in all the other alternate realities for three or four months. And at the end of the same paragraph, oddly, she felt almost as if he were not there any longer as if he had ceased to exist, along with her dreams, a few weeks after reaching the White Tower. Ooh, Discord has an interesting theory about Loghain, that once Nynaeve survives Falma, which wasn't certain, that then he will be healed and get his glory. Well, she certainly needs to be there for Loghain to do anything but cry and cry himself to death. Exactly. Next I have is Nynaeve controlling her temper. Elaine says... What's the matter with her to a queen, to Nynaeve, who's been pacing the whole time? Mm -hmm. That skinny accepted. Arella told her she was clumsy as a cow and had half the talents, and Nynaeve clouded her ear. Elaine winced. Exactly, Min murmured. They had her up to Shiriam's study before you could blink, and she hasn't been fit to live with since. Apparently, Min had not dropped her voice enough, for there was a growl from Nynaeve. Suddenly, the door whipped open once more, and a gale howled into the room. It did not ruffle the blankets on a queen's bed, but Min, Min and the stool toppled to roll against the wall. Immediately, the wind died, and Nynaeve stood with a stricken look on her face. So basically, Nynaeve got angry and used the power to knock Min over. This is like one of the four times we see Min apo- or uh, Nynaeve apologize to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very common. <laughs> but she says, I'm sorry, Min. Nynaeve said in a tight voice, sometimes my temper... Dot, dot, dot. I can't ask you to forgive me. I think it was reflexive in the same way that in the scene with Swan, I don't feel like she tried to do something mm-hmm. with the power. She just did. Yeah, I feel like with her anger combined with her abilities, she's just like didn't mean to do it. But yeah, it happened. She just wanted she to just knocks her off her chair. Yeah. Um, And she actually she's like, if you want to report me, that's OK. I mean, not that Mint ever would. Yeah. Min's no narc. No. Min's not really even part of the White Tower hierarchy. She's sort of outside of it a little bit. Yeah. Which gives her a lot of privilege. Well, compared to the other ladies. Right. She's Because she's not a novice, she gets to go where she wants. And Not nodding. Yeah. But she's also kind of trapped. It's like, I want to get the hell out of here. I noted that while Aguin and Elaine are passing the colored balls back and forth and practicing with the power, Aguin... It says, a queen saw the glow form around the daughter air even before three tiny balls appeared above her hands. And it's just a demonstration of how much better she's gotten. They couldn't touch it consistently necessarily. Whereas I feel like now she can pretty much, not all the time, but most of the time, embrace Sidar when she wants to. And while that happens, Min says to Nynaeve, if it comes to forgiving, maybe you should forgive me. You have a temper and I have a big mouth. She doesn't hold back so much. Yeah truth speaker indeed yeah that's true she is she's already that's a good foreshadowing she's already set up as a truth speaker yeah Nynaeve gets upset at elaine and aguin channeling when they're not really supposed to and kind of tries to scare them out of it it's it's a little bit like again going back to that drug analogy of like an overdose is very possible and she's scared of it but they have to like build up a tolerance and they have to practice using the power on that drug And so you need a good amount of fear 
to make sure you don't go too far. We have to practice, Elaine said. They ask more and more of us. If we did not practice on our own, we would never keep up. Her face showed calm composure, but she had let go of Sidar as hastily as Egwene herself had. I thought this was kind of interesting because it seems like the training in the White Tower is designed to be so difficult that you, like they're almost making the girls cheat. It's a weed out class, you know? They're also probably pushing these girls way harder than they would push most novices because they are so powerful and talented. Elaine um, and Aguin. I mean, they talk about how after three months, a lot of novices don't even have a touch the power much or do a small flame. I think, you know, it takes forever, sometimes months or years for girls to get to that point. Clearly, these three are being pushed harder. Well, that's true. Swan apologizes to them for pushing them so hard later. And I, that's a little bit, I think, of what's going on in the tower. I also think it's she pushes them by pushing them out into the real world and forcing them to. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, that's after they get back from their kidnapping. She forces them back out into the world. But and I think that's really what she's apologizing for. Perhaps they're extra hard. Perhaps her training is extra hard here. I think it could be. On Swan's orders. Just like in uh, a lot of sports teams that I've played for, they're trying to break you down, make you part of a team, make you part of the group, make sure that what you do is instinctual. Yeah. And also make sure they're so tired they can't channel when they're not actually in training. Too tired to chase boys and channel? Basically, yeah. yeah. Stop stop checking out Gallad with the shirt off. And, <laughs> and I like what Aradia is saying because Swan knows that they're connected to Rand and she can't let them be weak. Swan. Mm -hmm. And she use, definitely uses them more as a tool once she they're kidnapped by dark friends mm -hmm. because she knows they're not and that sort of confirmation that they're not Black Aja or potentially not Black Aja. So once, once they get back, she is able to use them a little bit more, I think, than she does here. A part of Rand's web. Yeah. I feel like here she's just sort of like they're just novices in training and she's not really doing much other than trying to push them as quickly as possible through the training. This is also the first time we see a reference to the small holes that novices drill in the wall so that they can talk to each other when their doors get locked at night. I imagine that somebody did it with the power hundreds of years ago. Sure. I always think it's funny that the eyes that I seem to like forget about it. And then right? like, <laughs> like you were novices not that long ago. Sometimes it's like a tradition that like, once you graduate, you don't really narc on the people who are doing it. Uh, I like this. You cannot run from Sidar when they're talking about giving, you know, joining the traveling people and giving it up. It's like, it's always going to be there now for them. Yeah. It doesn't matter where they go. They need to learn how to control it. Elaine says, what do you see? Do you see anything about that? To Min, are we all going to be powerful Aes Sedai, or will we spend the rest of our lives washing dishes? Min shifted on her stool. I don't like reading friends, she muttered. Friendships get in the way of the reading. It makes me try to put the best face on what I see. That's why I don't do it for you three anymore. Anyway, nothing has changed about you that I can... She squinted at them, and suddenly frowned. That's new, she breathed. What? Nynaeve asked sharply. Min hesitated before answering. Danger. You're all in some kind of danger, or you will be very soon. I can't make it out, but it is danger. And that's, of course, being kidnapped by Leandrin. Leandrin's walking down the hallway right now. Yeah. I wonder why that suddenly changed. Did Leandrin make a decision? Was there a message passed? I wonder, uh, like, I have to wonder, like, that seems like it was right before it happened. I don't know. But right after that, when the door swung open once more, Aguin bounded to her feet to close it, grateful for something to do besides watch the others pretend. Before she reached it, though, a dark-eyed Aes Sedai, with her blonde hair done in a multitude of braids, stepped into the room. Aguin blinked and surprised, as much as it being any Aes Sedai, as at Leandrin. She had not heard that Leandrin had returned to the White Tower, but beyond that, novices were sent for if an Aes Sedai wanted them. It could mean no good, a sister coming herself. So I'm assuming Leandrin isn't actually like back at the tower. I think she comes back through the ways. Or that she just arrived. Yeah. She just walked out of the ways. I think she just walks out of the ways and then walks up. I, I bet that that's when Min's vision clears is the second that 
Leandrin steps out of the ways. She I'm sees nodding. the danger. And Leandrin comes right up to them. If she gets out of the ways alive, the fate is sealed. That Well, that the fate of danger is sealed. Right. And that would also make sense, like, why no one else knows Leandrin is there and no one, they hadn't heard that Leandrin was back. It's because she didn't come back through the gates. She popped in through the garden. <laughs> so Leandrin's, like, basically gives them the third degree. Why are you here? What are you doing here? She looks at Nynaeve. And why are you here in the novice's quarters, child? Her tone was ice. I am visiting with friends, Nynaeve said. <laughs> After a moment, she added a belated, Leandrin Sedai. <laughs> the accepted, they can have no friends among novices. This you should have learned by this time, child. But it is well that I find you here. You and you, her fingers stabbed at Elaine and Min, will go. And of course, they go to the next room where there's a listening hole, and they just sit there and listen to this whole thing. So they're hearing everything that's going on. I think that Leandrin likes that Nynaeve is there because she captures an extra one attached to Rand. Oh, I think she wanted both of those. I think her orders were to get the two of them. Nynaeve and Nynaeve Egwene. And Egwene. I think they're trying to make them disappear under orders from the dark. They are definitely known as friends of Rand. Yeah. You two are from the same village as the boys who traveled with Moraine, is it not so? Leandrin said suddenly. Do you have some word of Rand? Aguin asked eagerly. Leandrin arched, arched an eyebrow at her. Forgive me, I said I. I forget myself. Have you word of them? Nynaeve said, just short of a demand. <laughs> the accepted had no rule about not speaking to an I said I until spoken to. I wonder how many of the I said I regret making her accepted. Like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> until much, much later. Yeah. Nynaeve what? doesn't make friends very much. No. No, She's she an abrasive character. Yeah. And even her friends are like, oh my God, I want to strangle her. <sighs> <laughs> She's on one again. You have concern for them. That is good. They are in danger and you might be able to help them. I liked that. That is not a lie. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, of course, Leandrin is free to lie. So there's no yeah. use in really analyzing what there's, she says. There's quite a bit of lie. Although, uh, how she knows, I don't think she has any idea. No, no. She probably just makes it up. She's just making that up. How do you know they're in trouble? There is no doubt about the demand in Nynaeve's voice this time. Leandrin's rosebud mouth tightened, but her tone did not change. Though you are not aware of it, Moraine has sent letters to the White Tower concerning you. Moraine said I, she worries about you, and about your young... friends. These boys, they are in danger. Do you wish to help them, or leave them to their fate? She knows that they'll trust Moraine, and she knows that she can play their heartstrings by saying the boys from their village are in trouble, and mm -hmm. Moraine wants you to help them, because they'll go, they, will, they do go. Yeah. That's totally. pretty much all she has to say. In any case, I liked how sharp Nynaeve is being in this scene. Yeah, she's demanding answers. Where Aguin says, yes, I'll go, and at the same time, Nynaeve says, what kind of trouble? Why do you care about helping them? Nynaeve glanced at the red fringe on Leandrin's shawl, and I thought you didn't like Moraine. And she's right on with all of those. Leandrin comes up with a bullshit story. She's mm -hmm. like, you wouldn't understand because you're not Aes Sedai, but sometimes you have to work with people you don't like. She just comes up with something on the fly. Yeah, that's that's kind of true. I mean, Leandrin, basically, anytime she has to work with anyone in the White Tower is working with someone she doesn't like. <laughs> she sums up her, her the story she feeds to Nynaeve with saying... Would you not work alongside to one you hated worst, if it would save your friends? Nynaeve nodded reluctantly. But you still haven't told us what kind of danger they're in, Leandrin said I. The danger comes from Sheol Ghul. They are hunted, as I understand they once were before. If you will come with me, some dangers, at least, may be eliminated. Do not ask how, for I cannot tell you. But I tell you flatly it is so. We will come, Leandrin said I, Aguin said. Come where, Nynaeve said. She's just on this... Mm -hmm. give me some answers like you're just give, being so vague and ridiculous yeah she wants to know something that's true the queen goes right for it but yeah. i mean if this were me in this situation i'd be like well you're not even going to tell us where mm -hmm. we're going like i'm just gonna this is clearly a trap <laughs> well and when she says they're being hunted like they were before i, I mean fane isn't really hunting them he's just well, no. waiting for them finally 
Leandrin answers to Tome and Head and refuses to answer any other questions. Gwyn says, if Ran needs our help and Ma and Perrin, we have to give it. I know that, Nynaeve said, but what I want to know is, why us? What can we do that Moraine or Leandrin cannot? Or you, Leandrin, cannot? We can see Leandrin getting angry because Nynaeve is absolutely right. Why would you ask someone who shouldn't doesn't even deserve to be accepted like has no training and a novice to come help you save somebody's life but in a lot of ways moraine does exactly that she frequently you know has turned to these girls for help in the eye of the world for help i mean she says you have to be there you're part of it you know i don't think that's what leandrin is sort of taking advantage of is basically saying you two come from their village. In some way, I do not entirely understand you are connected to them. And she's sort of playing off that connectedness that really Min kind of creates by, you know, the Firefly vision, where she says you're all connected to Rand. Mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> Egwene's like, oh, Leandrin's all pissed because Nynaeve didn't say the honorific, but really it's because Nynaeve is calling she's, her out. Yeah, yeah, getting right at the heart of it. Yeah, right off exactly the bat. what those lies are. Egwene realized Nynaeve had forgotten the honorific in addressing her, but what she said was, You two come from their village. In some way I do not entirely understand, he read this a little already, but you are connected to them. Beyond that I cannot say, and no more of your foolish questions will I answer. Will you come with me for their sake? She paused for their assent. A visible tension left her when when they nodded. Good. She tells them to meet her at the Ogier Grove. I also thought it was interesting that a tension leaves her. When they agree, I think Leandrin also knows that she couldn't forcibly kidnap them, probably. Well, it would be harder. It's it, She couldn't kidnap them and then, like, transport them. Drag them, them through screaming the through the halls yeah. or drag them silently through the halls. Mm-hmm. She can't make them disappear. She can't travel. This tension feels a lot like the tension that inktar has when he's following the horn oh yeah so i'm wondering if it maybe has some ishmael compulsion from the dark friend social because we know leandrin is the, at the dark friend social it could just be orders too yeah either one you know and so she finally convinces them by telling them the black aja walks the halls of the white tower which is a good tool the black aja that's totally true. The Black Aja does walk the halls. Yep. Many do, but Tarman Gaiden approaches, and the time leaves when denials can be made. It's also true. Yeah. If your friends are pursued by the shadow, do you think the Black Aja will leave you alive and free to help them? No, they won't, because they're going to kidnap you and give you the Sean Chan. They're already not. <laughs> yeah. That's me. I am going to not leave you alive and free to help. With that, she was gone, the door closing firmly behind her. The queen says, Nynaeve, she's Red Aja. She can't know about Rand. If she did, she cannot know, Nynaeve agreed. I wish I knew why a Red wanted to help, or why she's willing to work with Moraine. I'd have sworn neither of them would give the other water if she was dying of thirst. Do you think she's lying? The queen asks. She is, I said I, Nynaeve said dryly. I'll wager my best silver pin against a blueberry that every word she said was true. But I wonder if we heard what we thought we did. I mean, it's a safe bet at yeah. this point. <laughs> they have to assume that she's bound by the three oaths and all of all the things she said are were true. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things she said were true. Yeah. But it's the context and the way she said them. And do you think the Black Aja will yeah. just leave you alone? And then and one or two little well. lot, you know, actual lies were sort of mixed in there. But for the most part, she used true words to lie. But I think that's just traditional you know, I Sedai, the Black Acha wants to keep their cover. Yeah. But she also knows she's going to kidnap these girls and send them off to, like, Sean Chan. So I don't think she's being super careful. I think there's a couple of things that would be, like... If any of them turned around and told another I Sedai or Shiryam even, I think Leandrin's cover would be blown. Even though Shiryam's black. I thought about it a little. And I, th- I still think Shiryam would be like, no, you can't leave the tower. Right. Unless she had specific orders. Yeah, which, for some reason, I doubt. Well, Leandrin doesn't know who all the black is, right? None of them do. Some of the highest do. But, you know, the more I read this, the more I think that Leandrin is avoiding any bald-faced lies in her previous... Yeah? Well, I mean, just going through it, uh, uh, you know, we know none of this is true, but... 
I, I really thought the letter thing was a lie, but going back and verifying that that's not a lie really makes me question some of the other things that we thought were lies. Well, we don't know that that's not a lie. We we just all we know is that Moraine wrote letters to send to the, to the tower. Right, and I guess with I I doubt she wrote to Leandrin. What reason would she have? Well, but Leandrin doesn't say she wrote to Leandrin. She says she wrote to the White Tower, which is true. Wow. Though you are not aware of it, Moraine has sent letters to the White Tower concerning you. There's not provable lies in there, even if there is a lot of twisting of the truth. Yeah. When, when we say that's full of lies, it just means the th- the assumptions that she is presenting, the things that she is making you think, you know, are lies. And I think that Nynaeve calls it out that says, but I wonder if we heard what we thought we did. And I think that's that's the key is if you go back and reread that. Knowing she's black, the girls think she's saying one thing, but she's saying something else entirely. Yeah. Min and Elaine came bustling in, slamming the door behind them. Are you really going? Min asked. And Elaine gestured toward the tiny hole in the wall above Aguin's bed, saying, We listened from my room. We heard everything. Aguin exchanged glances with Nynaeve, wondering how much they had overheard, and saw the same concern on Nynaeve's face. Um, Because they were talking about ran channeling and i guess min and elaine don't know that elaine doesn't know yeah and min doesn't know either yeah, well probably probably yeah we don't know what she knows she could but i'm I'm going to assume that that's what they're worried about see if they say so. if they manage to cipher out about rand naive she's read aja she can't know about rand if she did so they don't say he's a channeler but they do say that what else would a red be upset about you know i said i and channelers get more symbols for men so it's possible that rand had more but i I bet he wasn't channeling enough to really be right that's what i was saying we don't know what she knows yeah and she could know she could know but it it wouldn't matter either way even if she does know she's sort of stuck she's she's not going to go tell the red aja well and doesn't elaine elaine knows that rand is a channeler because aguin says you know he's not for us he's going to go mad They've had that, that conversation, haven't they? I don't remember that. Yeah, we don't We don't think Elaine knows he's a channeler yet. It seems to be the consensus in the chat room. Yeah, she doesn't have any reason to know. Mm-hmm. And so the, the other two girls decide that they're coming because, of course, it's not safe to stay around if the Black Aja are there. And they just want to come. Yeah, they just want to go. They just yeah. want to get out of there. They're tired of scrubbing pots. They need an adventure. Min doesn't want to be there anymore answering stupid questions men never wanted to be there <laughs> no and yeah if rand's in danger these are two girls who are in love with him so of course they're gonna go see if they can help him three well i don't know how much in love Egwene is yeah i think they've fallen out of love at this point i think she's got a bigger crush on Galad than she has on rand i think she likes his brother more than she likes him four women who love him so with that decision to go, Min sees the danger around all of them much more clearly because they're definitely in danger now. Yeah, and I have a queen wondered why Min was so determined to go with them rather than simply leaving on her own. But before she had time to do more than wonder, Elaine said, I'm going too. I, I, I found myself wondering how much Min knows in this scene or whether she knows it's faded, like she's going whether she wants to or not. I mean, or she sees this... that they're all connected and that they're all in danger. So I think she has a good idea that, like, they have to go yeah. as a group. That's what she pretty much says here. She is linked to to those boys as much as you or Gween or me. She's part of it, Nynaeve. Whatever it is, part of the pattern. So that's Min saying, well, she's about to say link to Rand, but she says to those boys. And then she just connects them all together. And then Elaine's like... I am really. <laughs> Do I? I get to be part of the adventure because this is the first time that she's really, you know, she's just been in the palace and then she's been in Tarvalin. She's just been a good queen's daughter. Her only bit of excitement is when Rand fell into her garden. Yeah, she says there's no way you can stop me unless you report me. Which they probably should have her being the daughter of a queen and all, but well, Nynaeve threw up her hands after trying to convince Elaine not to come. Perhaps you can say something to convince her, she told Min. Min had been leaning against the door, squinting at Elaine, and now she shook her head. I think she has to come as much as the rest of you, the rest of us. 
I can see the d- danger around all of you more clearly now. Not clearly enough to make it out, but I think it has something to do with you deciding to go. That's why it is clearer, because it is more certain. There's no reason for her to come, Nynaeve said, but Min shook her head again. She is linked to those boys. You just read this part. Or a Gween, or me. She's part of it, Nynaeve, whatever it is. Part of the pattern, I suppose, and I said I would say. So then with there's really just last page, but with no other alternative, Nynaeve is like, fine, we're all going. And she's, you know, they've decided they're going and she just charges right ahead, starts figuring out what they need to take with them. Then we had best be about making plans, however much she might argue beforehand. Once a course of action had been decided, Nynaeve always went right to the practicalities. What they had to take with them, how cold it would be by the time they reached home and head, and how they could get their horses from the stables without being stopped. Listening to her, Aguin could not help wondering what the danger was that Min saw for them, and what danger threatened Rand. She knew of only one danger that could threaten him, and it made her cold to think about it. Hold on, Rand. Hold on, you wool-headed idiot. I'll help you somehow. She will, just from the other side of the world, you know. Yeah. In the second war of power. Right. I just, I, it's funny to watch them run into danger to try and help each other and completely fail. <laughs> well, miss each other and do yeah. another task. Because, like, Rand sees her and Falma and, like, tries to rescue her. But, yeah, it's already taken care of by the time <laughs> he gets around to it. And and the Black Aja here is just trying to get a hold of Nynaeve and Egwene. Right. They don't give a crap about Elaine or Min. No. When they show up, she's like, yeah, okay, you can you can be kidnapped along with the rest of them. I don't mind that. But yeah, she's like bonus and slave channeler, whatever. Do we know anything about where Leandrin's motivations come from? Are we just speculating that she has orders from Ishmael? Well, we know she was at the Dark Friend Social. Yeah. Because she says so in, I think, Lord of Chaos. So I'm assuming this is all based on that meeting and that she has orders to get rid of these, two, rid girls of these two girls that are the, part of the... It could be an update because she was around those two girls before. And she disappeared. And she disappeared, and yeah. Almost certainly sent a drag car to Moraine. So certainly she could have gotten updated orders in that period of time. Yeah. Um, but these two girls are being targeted because they are from the two rivers. And I'm guessing in some prophecy they're shown they're shown to be a basically a support for Rand. And uh, Ishmael not... wants him gone because he doesn't want them to be supporting him. Which, I mean, is huge, right? Like, the whole cleansing of the source wouldn't be possible without Nynaeve. Yeah, and healing the tower. Without Egwene. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing would have collapsed without them. Even if the last battle wasn't lost, with a broken tower and tainted Sidene, what is future going to be like without them not good at all Thank you for listening to the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Rate us in the Apple Podcast app or support us on Patreon. Is that good enough?